Good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we're going to discuss a subject that's on a lot of our minds. It's on my mind for sure. It's something that's really gotten to me, you know, is the world, is the world that we live in, is it getting smarter or dumber? You know, I wanted to be positive to acknowledge that the world is getting smarter. You know, with every young child that I meet, when they have it together, I feel almost vindicated and delighting in the fact that they're smart kids. You know, when I meet new people who seem to have it all on the ball, I'm elated as well. However, I've been listening to the media, I've been reading, I've been reading a lot of books. I've also been reading a lot of scientific studies, everything from Cambridge to New Zealand. And they've all been asking the same question. Is the world getting smarter or instead is it getting dumber? Hey, Bill, what's going on? Hey, doing pretty good. You know, just uh, trying to keep up the old brain power. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Which is sometimes is a challenge. Now, I don't know if the world is getting smarter or dumber, but uh, our, our own little world here in the studio is getting smaller. It's like it's just you and me this week. You know? It's like last week we had like a circus. You know, we, we had, did. We had like Eric, we had Keenan, we had Kimberly, we had Di taking pictures, we had you and me. We had and video, we had surveillance. And now it's just, you know, you and me. It's like, you know, I use soap today. You know? It's like, what's up with that? You know? I love it. This is great. <laughs> but we like to do this. This is fun because you and I, I mean, we, we, we began this show together and this is always what's good about it. Right? That's right. Yes. Getting to our roots. The basics. Getting back to the roots. Not the basics. We're getting Back to the roots. Get back to the roots, and, and, and maybe the world as a, a whole needs to get back to its roots. Some sort of roots, right? Yeah. I mean, I like to see that happen because yeah, all these studies I've been reading, everything from Cambridge to New Zealand to all kinds of, gosh, even Stanford have had studies that have come out that that really kind of show that we're all getting dumber by the minute. Well, and you know, you and I were kind of talking before the show. And I'm going to have a bit of a different perspective than you uh, tonight. Uh, I, I think they're kind of related. But uh, my thing is, well, uh, my, I have a couple questions. First of all, how do they define intelligence? You know, is it test scores or IQ, t- uh, you know, uh, uh, levels or, you know, what have you? I mean, how, how are they measuring this? Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, a lot of people begin with the IQ exams, and there are studies. There are, there are hundreds, thousands of studies that half of them agree that the IQ exam test uh, scores are going down. Others say they're going up, but for the people that say they're going up and they said that they're skyrocketing, rocketing, they still say there's a darker view. I mean, even Stanford University School of Medicine uh, researcher, what is it, Gerald Crabtree, he published a couple of papers and journals on genetics and the humanity's intelligence and how it really peaked, get this, between 2,000 and 6,000 years ago. And what he was trying to say or what he's saying is that about 2,000 to 5,000 genes – actually control human intelligence, and that we actually have these genetic mutations that accumulate. And we've actually had a few in the last 3,000 years, and we're expected to have a few more. And, and I guess basically those are the genes that make up our intelligence, so that determines basically, I guess, how smart we are. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, you know, uh, certainly, uh, you know, p- people back in the prehistoric age, you know, somebody invented fire, somebody invented the wheel, you know, somebody invented agriculture, uh, you know, and, and all that good stuff. Um, but you look around today and, uh, you know, uh, new inventions are coming out practically every week. Uh, new discoveries are being made. Uh, you know, great literature, uh, uh is being written. That's interesting though, but, but back in the day though, there were discoveries all the time, you know, I mean, you're right. It, and, and they were talking also about since like, since the mid 1800s, they said that IQ, right. And reproduction have been negatively correlated. Like they say that the studies have found that, honestly, in, in a blunt way, that more intelligent, the highly intelligent people are not reproducing. Well, and, and that, I think that is true. I think st- statistics do show that if, and, and of course we have to qualify this, uh, you know, let's say that uh, people who are more well off economically, financially, socially, or whatever, uh, tend to be better educated, therefore, I guess, quote unquote, smarter. Uh, you know, because IQ, and, and of course, there's con- there's always been controversy around the uh, in, you know uh, intelligent quo- intelligence quotient. That's what IQ stands for. Um, it is skewed towards people who have a more f- of a formal education. But um, 
if if we uh, say just for a moment that you know, okay, IQ, you know, uh, smarter people are better off, then uh, statistics do show that people, the more better off you are financially, economically, socially, whatever, the less children you have. It's it's people who are not well off that are having kids left and right. Oh, and for everybody that's listening tonight that has kids that say, hey, I am intelligent, we get it. We get it. But they're, they're talking about you're <laughs> we're, not... You're we're not, not <laughs> dissing, you know, I mean, people with kids. Okay? We understand that there's a lot of intelligent people listening tonight that do have children. We're not dissing you. And, and I think what they're saying is that you're not doing a really great job of populating the world, okay? It's one thing to have two kids. It's a different thing to have 12, you know? I mean, there's, there's, yeah. there's a concept here. So people that have children that are listening, we got it. But I think you're right about the test scores because I do know um, people, like, I remember when I took tests, like, so you, you can go back to the... SAT, ACT. I mean, on the ACT, if it wasn't for the ACT, I wouldn't have gotten scholarships into college. Right. I mean, because I, I didn't do well in the SAT. For the schools that I wanted to get into, that wouldn't have helped me. And and I, I didn't really take it seriously. Okay, I get it. And I understand. I, I didn't even know that you couldn't guess. I didn't even know you were supposed to guess. I thought you were supposed to just leave them blank if you didn't, didn't know. And I actually had to borrow a pencil off somebody when I walked in the door. But that tells you about how much I knew that what I was getting into. <laughs> right. But when it comes to certain testing, I think that people can test well on certain things. I think on the flip-flop, though, I think sometimes that doesn't always test the cognitive. I think that can test like, um, you know, A plus B equals C. But, I'm, you know, how does C feel? You know, what's what's really – what is A, B, and C really? What are those? Okay, those are letters. You know, it, it's it, it, to me, there's a, there's a different style of thinking. Well, and I think that's uh, another question I might have about uh, the, the studies that, uh, you know, I think there's different – kinds of intelligence and my, my grandmother is actually big on this and she was she's a retired teacher she taught for 30 years there's book smarts and there's street smarts and i think a lot of these you know the iq test the act test uh, you know all these intelligence uh uh measures i think are skewed towards again people who have formal education which means book smarts you know, I mean, I know lots of quote unquote smart people. They are, you know, no, no quote unquote about it. They are smart. You know, like, like for example, I know a physician who, I mean, is like a Jeopardy candidate, okay? I mean, this is how smart this person is. But uh, last month, uh, the uh, air conditioner crapped out on him, okay? And he was lost, didn't know what to do. And so called the air conditioner repairman. And now, uh, it, it, according to what he told me, I mean, you know, uh, high school uh, graduate, nothing else, went to trade school, and uh, but you know, and would not. Where are be, you going with this? Well, though? what do you mean? Well, I mean, <laughs> it, he's not what what our society would call smart. Okay, okay, you're talking about the AC repairman. Yeah, yeah the AC repairman. Okay, and yeah, but he's but he's trained to do something. I mean, he's right, trained exactly. He has street smarts. He has practical smarts. But and, he's trained in, but, but in see, an occupation. If, but if but mm -hmm. if he but if he took this IQ test or if he participated in the study, what are, what are the odds of that he'd be considered smart? Yeah, that, that's my point. Okay, well, I mean, I I see what you're saying. I I, I feel though that for for the most part, I, I do feel that people are getting dumber by the minute. Though I really do. I mean, and what I'm trying to say about that is like, like for example, if somebody was to ask, like, think about the difference in questions. So I think back in the 19th century, if you asked what the relationship between a dog and a hare, we know a dog and a hare, a hare is a rabbit, right? Uh, I think pe people would probably say that you know the dog's gonna hunt the hare. I think nowadays people would actually say that those are those are two mammals. You see what I'm saying? Like they, yeah. would, they would put it, it – it's not in maybe practical form, but maybe it's in, 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 in theoretical form. But, yeah, I see what you're saying, though. Some people can be very intelligent like a doctor, but they can't get their, you know, their, their, their head out of their butt to say that, you know, when it comes to the AC. But I think that's a trait. I think that's something you have to learn, and I think that sometimes we might not have all the practical ability, but you can have, like, you know, some major intelligence. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, and, and we'll kind of get into more of this as we go along, but uh, I guess my – uh, what I would say to this study is that I think that, yeah, I mean, the, uh, a lot of people are getting dumber. I think it's because literally sensory overload is killing brain cells. Oh, yeah. Well, you brought that you know? up earlier. Uh, and, and, and I and I understand that. You brought that up before we started the show tonight. And I agree with you. I do think, though, it's a cop out sometimes. And it's just kind of like the concept when people said don't what, don't walk and chew gum. You know, at the same time, people can't, you know, walk and chew gum. Right. I really think that that's a lot of society nowadays. I really think that some people can't do two things at once, but they think they can. They certainly try to, like you were talking about multitasking right before we walked into the studio. And I think some people think they're multitasking. I just think that they don't do anything very good. No, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, 
the question of, of a, a, applicability. I'll get it out. A, applicability. Say that fast three times. Applicability. Uh, applicability. Yeah. Applicability. Okay, show off. <laughs> Uh, but uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, baby. Yeah. In the house of applicability. But yeah, I mean, you've seen this uh, all the time, Ashley. Somebody will have their heads in their smartphone. They got their earbuds in listening to And whatever. they're trying to like write a paper. And, you know, or playing around on whatever app. You and know, if you or, read that paper, usually it's awful. Or even better, uh, they're playing whatever, you know, Worlds of Warcraft or, or whatever. Worlds of Warcraft. And, uh, I mean, uh, you know, vid- oh my gosh, video games these days, I mean, there's three three million apps for that and, and it kills brain cells. It, it reminds me of when my mom used to tell me, you know, that you're going to go blind watching the TV, shut it off and go outside. And, and that's why when we're going to talk later on here in the hour about how funny it is that we're legalizing all this marijuana and pot all over the country right now. <laughs> it's just making people a lot smarter, let me tell you that. So tonight's show, we're going to be discussing what's wrong with humanity, how we are getting stupider, and how you can actually personally make a positive change to stay smart. So stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm and there's a swim-up bar. Glass of perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. And can you tell me who the Vice President of the United States is? Nope. Nope. Um, crap. (laughs) Who's the Vice President of the United States? Um, I don't remember What's his name? I don't know that. I didn't know that. All right. Vice President, is that our boy Biden? It is our boy Biden. Our boy Biden holds it down, yeah. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And tonight's show we're discussing is the world getting smarter or dumber. You know, I wanted to actually take this positive step. I wanted to be vindicated to say, we're all getting smarter. That's just the way of the world. But you know what? I don't know about that. I'm not that sure. So, wah, 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 wah. And so through tonight's show, we'll be discussing what's wrong with humanity and how you can personally change it and help yourself to stay as smart as you are. So, you know, we, right before the break, we were discussing IQ. And I think a lot of people might have heard the clip that we just played right before this segment. And that is funny. That is <laughs> yeah. so funny. I mean, people can't they don't even know who the president of the United States is right now. They don't even know who the vice president of the United States is right now. That one guy got it. That one guy figured it yeah. out. He figured it out, and he was like, oh, yeah, he's the greatest guy. He's keeping it. You know, and he's holding this, the fort down. In this day and age, you know, with the media being the way it is, who doesn't know Barack Obama is the president of the United States? How do you not know that? Yes. That's what I mean, I'm saying. It's, it's like even if all you watch is Big Brother and American Idol and whatever else the Kardashian sisters are up to these days— uh, how do you not know Barack Obama is the president? I don't know. I really just, I don't get it. And, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't know that kind of stuff. And we were talking about IQ tests earlier and, you know, studying IQ tests and how those actually test for intelligence. And I just don't think that IQ tests can really be used because I don't think it actually can measure intelligence to a certain degree because I think there's cultural influences. I think that's a big sidebar is when people are comfortable and you're giving them what they want and they have food and shelter and all these opportunities i think people are more iq bookie smart oh absolutely i mean uh again i think the iq test is skewed towards people who have a formal western style education and uh, i think you just hit it uh, the people who have the time to pursue that formal western style education some people just you know they got to put food on the table I agree with you. And, and, and I think if you look back at historical intelligence, I think the researchers that I've been reading turn out that IQ tests really don't show intelligence, but I think more so is reaction time. You know, simple reaction time, the amount of time it takes to respond to a stimulus. Okay, so think about this. Like, this is the reason why we're doing this show tonight, okay? Is starting a few weeks ago, well, this goes back years, but it, it really came into my brainwave a few a few weeks ago about how people's reaction times were so poor, uh, especially when it comes to driving or it comes to anything that's not oh, exactly geez. expected, okay? Golly. When it comes to something that's not necessarily expected. And so I started doing little tests to my own. And, and I know this is kind of funny, but I used the stopwatch application on my phone. And I would actually time how long it would take somebody 
to once I saw something for them right behind me to see it and react. And it was like a good, there was like an extra 20 seconds for them, maybe 25. Sometimes they didn't even react properly. So, for example, uh, I did a test where there was um, a delivery truck that was on in the far right lane. Uh, I don't think they even had their hazards on, but they weren't moving. Right. Okay. And it's kind of an off ramp from the highway. And I saw it when I got off, because like, I, I have really good peripheral vision. I really watched, you know, every side, everything that's going on. And I caught it. Right when I caught it, that's when I started timing other people to see what they were going to do. And I just, you know, moved into the center lane. No big deal. There were some people that it took um, right up to the last, I mean, millisecond. Like, they were going to run right into that truck. There were some people that actually had to slam on their brakes, and they got stuck behind the non-moving truck. And it's like you saw it from over the bin. I mean, where were you in your mindset that you didn't see this huge truck sitting there? Well, you know, Ashley, um, you know, I, I it would be very easy for both of us to get into the sidebar of uh, dumb drivers. <laughs> yeah, but it goes farther but, than that. So, so I, I tell you what, let's let our listeners do that. Uh, we're blogging live on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and so if you have, you know, dumb driver stories, you know, kind of like what we're talking about, then please share them because I'm sure that we all have them. I know I do. Um, yeah, we've all seen it where you got somebody that literally just runs the red light that's been red for so long. Yeah. I mean, you know, like you're just like unbelievable. Nobody died in that one, you know? And then think about when things happen, like you'll see people just react so poorly to stuff. It's or unbelievable. My favorite one is uh, they wait until just about 10 seconds until they get to their off ramp and then do the five lane cross. Oh, yeah. You know, I like it when and- they just stop. Oh. How many have people I, just stop saw, on the yes, highway? Yes, I saw. What that about all the, time. the stop and reverse? I've had that too. I've yes. seen people stop on the ramp and then try to reverse into oncoming traffic so they can get back onto the yeah. side ramp. Unbelievable. Well, and you know, so again, you know, uh, all our listeners, well, we'd love to hear your stories about that. I'm sure y'all have got some good ones. Um, but I, I think that attention span is something that has just, I mean, fallen. Forget declines; it's fallen off a cliff. In the past, say ten years or so, uh, as a sensory overload, uh, TV. I mean, there's what five hundred channels on TV. There's thousands of apps on people's smartphones, uh, millions of websites, and uh, usually people nowadays take them in multiple sources all at once. And uh, you can't have a decent conversation with a lot of people anymore. They, they can't hold their attention for more than five seconds. I, I agree with you. And if, even if you go back to the 1880s, they did a study. It was what Sir Francis Galton actually studied, like, reaction time, measurement of reaction time. And it was like 183 milliseconds for men to have a certain reaction, reaction time from, you know, a certain stimulus. For women, it was 187 milliseconds. In 1941, for men, it was 250. For women, 277. And that was in 41. I mean, I don't. There's no milliseconds anymore. Okay, I'm talking about. It's taking people minutes to react now. Probably because you know the the drivers that you saw with, with the uh, delivery truck, they were probably texting, and you know, and who also- know? I think I, I and I kind of try. I try to see if they're looking, and normally they are. Normally they are. They're just. I just think that there's a lapse in, in ability for. Oh, okay. There's a truck there. What do and, I do? And also, you got to think. I mean, uh, you know, of course, nowadays traffic permitting, uh, people are driving seven or eighty miles an hour uh, on the highway, so there's less reaction time that they have there in the first place. And you know, and, and to me, it, it, it's crazy though. It's it, it's really asinine. You know, when you think about it, is that you know, it, it's when people. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you know that you can't walk and chew gum at the same time, don't chew the gum or don't <laughs> walk. You know, figure it out. Maybe Do one, one or the other. Yeah. yeah. If you, I mean, kind of be honest with yourself. And I think that's really kind of one of the main problems in our society today is that people are all, I, I, I'm so good at everything I do. And they're not. They're just absolutely not. And and they're taking on way too much, and they're doing way too much, and they're doing nothing well. Well, uh, I was about to say, Ashley, have you heard the old phrase, uh, jack of all trades, master of none? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's and I of, think that definitely applies here. You know, I mean, of course, I mean, generally speaking, besides this topic uh, that we're talking about, uh, our country has become, you know, kind of a children of the corn society. <laughs> you know, we're all above average. Okay. I like and, that children of the corn analogy. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody has to, you know, be the same, you know, in, in everything, uh, no matter what. And um, so, you know, like I said, uh, uh, the more sensory overload that we have, then the less our attention span. And, you know, I mean, even, you know, people's brains 
are only capable of so much. And so if you choose to spend your intelligence towards this direction, then there's not very much that's, I mean, your brain is kind of like a muscle. You know, you got to exercise it in order for, right. you, for you to use it. And, and, and let's go into that, too, because I know that this can be kind of doomsday and depressing a little bit, this subject matter. And I understand for anybody that's really intellectual that's listening tonight, I mean, the intellectuals, I think, get it to the fact that it, it, this is a this is a, not a very good state of affairs. I mean, we really are kind of crumbling in front of our very eyes. So how do we really – how do we slow this down, whether it's personally or how do we actually spread the word? And I think the first thing is you have to read. And when I mean read, I'm not talking about reading Us Weekly. <laughs> or, or TMZ Online you know, f- to find out the latest on what's going on backstage. Or of Cosmo. Uh, or, or Cosmo. or It's about yeah. gaining knowledge. And, you know, the biggest thing about reading is reading like reading like scientific journals, reading, you know, literature, reading things that make you smarter, that open up your mind, even if it's vocabulary. You know, current events. You know, the news. I mean, now, I mean, I'm not talking about uh, the, uh, uh, you know, real. But even go go even farther than that. I see what you're saying, but let's go back to history. I think that's even better than current events is look back at history and start realizing that a lot of this stuff has already happened. I mean, half of y'all think that it just happened yesterday. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's, uh, to understand uh, what's going on today, you have to understand where we came from. I mean, you have uh, to know yeah. where things are. I mean, geographically, organize your mind. Like, I've had people in my life, God bless them, y'all are good friends of mine. However, you're <laughs> in your late 30s or your early 30s, and you don't even know where certain countries are. You have no idea, and you're actually interchangeably changing them to another country and talking about how that dictator, they, they're, it's not even near that. It's not even in that country. And I'm not going to give specifics at this point, but you know, geography and understanding where things are and how the world is mapped out is another logical step of what? Educating yourself, getting to know the world you're in. I mean, it's amazing when you actually have knowledge, right? What you can do with knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So when we return, okay, we're going to be giving you more concepts and ideas of how you can right this stupid wrong and why we are getting stupider. So stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. We'll be back in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess on 570 KLIF. Can you tell me when the Constitution was written? Um, why am I supposed to know that, Ann? 1776. No. 1775. Uh, 1792. Probably like 1772-ish? 73? Um, shoot. Nine, 18... 40. <laughs> 1787. 1787. Okay. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we've been discussing, is the world getting smarter or are we getting dumber? And, you know, for a lot of us, I think this has been on our mind. It's crucial. I mean, because I think for most of us, I think for most scientists out there, they believe and they know that, yes, we are getting dumber. And, you know, there's a recent study that they did. Uh, I, I, it was another study actually out of Cambridge as well. And they were talking about how a lot of people would actually be shocked that most of the general public, most of humanity, believes that we're progressing, that we're both physically and mentally better than we were, um, you know, decades before. And honestly, what they found out is that we're weaker than we used to be. We're weaker, both mentally and physically. And I think that's an interesting concept because that, that rings true because I think a lot of times we always think we're the smartest well, it doesn't sound like we are that smart as anymore. It sounds like we're actually, you know, getting less smart. Well, I mean, from the mental standpoint, first of all, Ashley, look at pop culture. It's it's not cool to be smart. It's actually cool to not be smart, if you think about Why it. Why is that? It's. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think that... Is that because uh, there's not as many smart people out there that can take no, the smart, intelligent knowledge base? I think, and, and this may be just completely off the wall, but uh, I think that there's this... You know, culture of, uh, especially in this country, culture of youth rebellion. And, you know, what, what do you rebel against? Well, the expectation, you know, for you to, you know, actually get an education and 
and do something useful in your life. Well, no, we're going to rebel against that, you know. And uh, you're so right. Music, I've read that on some blog posts actually recently. You know, music mm-hmm. and uh, you know TV shows and uh, you know everything else. Uh, you know, you, you look at the the pop culture stars of today. You know, athletes, musicians, actors, whatever. Yeah, none of them are Einstein's. Right? Yeah, none of them. Are, well, I mean, here's the thing though: they could be, I think, if. They were trained at some point, or if they made the decision to train themselves to actually develop their brain power. Or, or is, are they playing a game? So then you can look at the flip flop and say, are these people smart, so smart, that they're actually playing dumb to fit in? Well, you know, Marilyn Monroe is the best example of that. She, you know, by IQ standards, she was a genius. She had genius level IQ, mm-hmm. but she uh, bleach blonded her hair and uh, played dumb and became one of the most famous actresses of all time. And you still see that today. I mean, think about it. Why would you waste all this time and energy developing your brain power when you can just get a boob job and dye your hair and, you know, uh, and be famous that way? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But the question to me is what kind of society would deem that as good? What kind of society would like the fact that, oh, these people are so dumb, I'm going to follow them? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not a smart society. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you, you it's not a smart that, society. It's kind of like it's kind of like the old adage, like you know, I, you know, when you go to a school, when you work really hard in high school, when you you devote your time and effort to your 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 degrees, and in, in, in my my situation, in my schooling and my debate, and I ended up going to a, a school, um, you know, to take a scholarship, but I I was kind of rebelling. I was kind of in a midlife crisis at a young age. Um, through all my debating and everything competition, then I decided to take a school that didn't do debate. And it was kind of sad because, I mean, I'm not going to put down the school and I'm not going to discuss the school, but I'm saying it was kind of sad that most of these people paid to get in the school. They didn't work to get in the school. They didn't work. They didn't. And, and I think that that's where we should be at is I think society should be rebelling against the kids that paid to get there. They should be rebelling against the uh, idiocracy. They should be rebelling against the stupidity. And they should be embracing the intelligence level and saying, hey, we're over this. We're, we're sick of being dumbed down. We're sick of being talked to uh, on a sixth grade reading level. And, and, and for that matter, I mean, the news and everything else, they speak at a sixth or seventh grade reading level. In fact, you know, you know me as a radio television uh, journalism student. We should uh, expect more. You know, but but they, they actually teach us that. You know, you got to write at a sixth grade level. And it's sad. We should expect more. I mean, really, honestly. I mean, we should be rebelling. We should be picketing in the streets right now. Okay? Let's do it, Ashley. Let, let, let's make up the placards. Seriously. I mean, because it is sad. It's a sad state of affairs when intelligence is beaten down by stupidity. You know what I mean? Because I, I do feel like it's almost like a war between the intelligence and the stupidity. And it's just this war of people that are saying, no, no, we're going to keep the world this way. I mean, you are going to watch the Kardashians and you will sit there and do this. See, but it's not cool to do all that. You know, Not it, cool to do what? To, to, to act smart. But it's cool to smoke pot, But it's cool to smoke pot. Oh, yeah, I love that. Let's legalize pot in all states in the country so people can be even more smart. You know, which has proven to kill brain cells. I mean, uh, Let's get smarter. Let's smoke pot. Or or drink yourself into oblivion. You know, alcohol kills brain cells. In fact, you and I have a mutual friend. You know know who it is. Um, And she's a wonderfully talented, intelligent, beautiful woman Mm -hmm. who does the dumbest things. Yeah, you know, and and, and she, in fact, she I think she goes out of her way to act dumb sometimes. I I think so too because I think she gets something out of it. Now, whether it's something good she gets out of it or whether it's a accepted response she gets out of it is different. But yeah, I agree. I I think we have to expect more. And I think let's go back to the pot thing real quick. Side note: there are people listening to the show tonight. I get it. You might be smoking pot. You could be a genius. Maybe there might you're be doing people, it right now. Yeah, there could be people that can drink as much as they want, and they're still fine. But for the most part, genetically speaking, most people do not have enough brain cells and intelligence to get away with that and still be able to cognitive, you know, cognitively actually think and actually go into a society and deal with it. I mean, honestly, people are really scraping by with the brain cells they have. Well, I mean, and it's been scientifically proven, again, that uh, Wish Kenyon was here tonight because he could probably teach us all about it. But, you know, in your brain, you know, chemical receptors are how, you know, the nerves in your brain talk to each other and the, and the different centers in your brain talk to each other. Pot, uh, alcohol, any type of drug is a chemical. And those chemicals inhibit you know well, the, the brain. I think I mean, about the reaction it's been proven. go back to the reaction time the whole concept that i believe actually it, it speaks for intelligence like you were saying bill okay so in a reaction time think about uh let's think about why people get a dwi 
Let's talk about that, right? Okay. So you get pulled over and you do uh, you do a test. And let's say you say no to the breathalyzer test. You have to do a field sobriety test, right? right? And a field sobriety test is several things where you're walking in a straight line. One foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. You can take off your shoes if you're wearing heels, so it's not about that. And then you can actually you actually put one finger to your nose and, and back and forth, you know, alternating uh, left hand, right hand, left hand, right yeah. hand. So the reason why they do that is because it actually, you know, alcohol actually slows down your response time. Right. Okay. Pot does too. That's why they have um, DWI and under the influence. They have drinking and under the influence. So they have both. And that's why it affects that. And for some of us, you know, you just feel like, oh, it just affects me for like a couple of hours and I wake up the next day. But I think over a period of time is what we're talking about. And some people... This is genetically not even an issue for you. You're way, you're, you're highly intelligent. You don't even need to worry about this. But I think for other people, and I think for our country, I mean, the reaction time and the way that people are able to react to something. I mean, this is this is this is pretty rough. Well, and it's been proven that uh, you know it may affect you only for two hours. Uh-uh. Uh, uh, THC, which is the uh, drug in marijuana, okay. Uh, we'll stay. Really, is that the drug? Yeah, THC. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, don't ask me to uh, say what the what it means. It's you know some twenty five syllable word. Bill knows everything about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we, well, a different story for another time. But anyway, it, you know, THC will stay in your body for ninety days. And I thought it was thirty days. Hmm, it stays up to ninety days. Really? You know, and it stays in the you know your your fatty cells and you know in in, in the cells of your body. Oh. Uh, and it, it, the more you do it, the more that builds up and builds up and builds up. And that's look, folks. There's a reason why they're called stoners. Man, okay? that's right. I it, didn't really think about that. There's, there's a reason why, even when somebody's not stoned necessarily, they still look and act stoned because it's still in. It's, it's almost like a pill that has a long shelf life. Yes, you t- it's like a pill that has a long shelf life. You take it, yes. and you still have the residuals, right? Yes, it's not out of your system. And that's interesting. See, I, I couldn't smoke because you couldn't get me in the you couldn't get me inside the studio. I'd be so big. I and mean, plus, I just can't do that. Here's what makes it worse, Ashley. Uh, the strains of marijuana that are coming out now are getting to near dangerous levels. I mean, it, it you know it used to be unheard of for somebody to actually overdose on pot. You can OD on pot. You can now with, with some of the strains, and it's not just the little joint. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, the, you know, the the little bitty thing. You know, right. the, okay, you know, toke up on it. You know, a few puffs, and okay, you get a good sensation, and it's over with. People are smoking darn near cigars. Oh, of, blunts of this and stuff like that, right? Yeah, blunts, and uh, so you know, I mean, it's like big around as 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 your, your finger almost. Well, I mean, but how can you OD though on pot? Though I thought you could only kind of like mentally probably go into well, some sort I mean, of panic about mode it with uh, you know because the the uh, uh, power, mm-hmm. uh, for lack of a better word, I don't know the technical term. The intensity, yeah, the intensity of of the strains of marijuana that are coming out now i mean you know pe- people here's here's how the misapplication of intelligence is bad for us people have figured out how to make marijuana more powerful well and and, and I, yeah yeah i agree because it's becoming more and more legal yeah so, so they're able to do whatever they want to and so, i remember the united states won the pot olympics for five years in a row in amsterdam <laughs> yeah. right yeah so so if you know bigger blunts of more powerful marijuana and then you just you know you know suck this stuff in yeah i mean it's possible to, to od yeah, well, I, I hadn't even thought about that. That's very interesting, and I, and I think that that correlates back with the fact of reaction time. So when we return, we're going to be talking about the things you can do, because I know that we thoroughly depressed y'all tonight. <laughs> the things you can do Come to— Come back. It's going to get more positive. Yeah, we're going to bring it up. We're bringing up, we're bringing up the room. We're bringing up the room. The things you can do to actually offset this and keep your smart self. So stay tuned, because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. I can lift you up I can show you what you want to see And take you where you want to be Get in here and give us your perspective We're listening You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess Perspective on things, doesn't it? Not too much. It's too much perspective now. 
Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we've been discussing, is the world getting smarter or is it getting dumber? And I think that we've kind of made our decisions on that. We talked about reaction time. We talked about IQ testing. We talked about changes in the last three to 6,000 years. We've discussed all these options. We talked about the marijuana, the legalization of it, and all that. We talked about input, output, being overstimulated, everything else in between. So let's talk about the things that you can do to keep your smart self smart. Because we know that you're smart because you wouldn't be listening to the show unless you weren't. So let's talk about that. The first thing you can do to keep your smart self smart is to read. Talking about reading books. Yeah, reading old books, learning, gaining knowledge, not accepting what you're being told, but go find out the truth for yourself. Okay, I think that's key. It's quintessential to having intelligence. The quintessential intelligence case is I'm not going to just buy what they tell me. I'm going to go see it with my own two eyes. And you know what? Read a newspaper. And you don't even have to have the physical newspaper anymore. Get online. You know, every newspaper in the world has an online version now. Uh, so, you know, read a newspaper. Read some literature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Re- read some literature, even if it's just fiction, even if it's just, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, you know? lo- oh, come on, man. Oh, this is supposed to be. This is supposed to make people smart. <laughs> but well, at, at least it gets them. Not reading. to gain a sex addiction. We're trying to make people smart. Well, I mean, we're not it, giving them addictions. We're not trying to turn y'all on the pot and sex tonight on this show. <laughs> at, at least if they read Fifty Shades of Grey, at least they're reading something. Maybe, maybe they might, you know, go read something else. I don't smut, know. smut. They're reading. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I understand what you're saying. At least you're reading, okay? But but you know there is a thing of quality and quantity. So so think about what you're reading, and if you want to know. more more about what's going on in the world start with some history too history helps if you want to know what's going on in the world especially with the new situations that we've had recently with ebola and everything else and you want to know where liberia and other places are go find out go learn geography go figure it out just because you know where you live doesn't mean that you know anything else about the world and you know we played those clips throughout the show in the beginning of the segments and they were so funny the last the last the third segment we played it and it People had no That's idea. Hilarious. Well, and, and you know, Jay Leno. Uh, we were saying this before the show. Jay Leno has been doing stuff like that for years, up until he retired. Well, I love that, and and, um, and I think it's great. Yeah. And we're going to start doing more of that because I think that that's essential. And I think we should do more of that in our shows to actually prove a point. And I think that proves a point that out of all those people, only one person passed, and you only had to get six questions right out of ten. So that wasn't a lot. And one person out of all those people. That's it's kind of sad. So the next thing you can do um, is about your response time. Right? Your response time. And like we talked about earlier, if you're online right now and you're on Facebook, you can see that we're on Facebook too on Ashley Burgess as well as Perspectives with Ashley Burgess and also tweeting at Ashley Burgess as well. And Bill will sooner or later have a Twitter twi- Twitter account as well. So he will be on Twitter Great. to tweet and tweet, 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 tweet. Bill so, will be so, tweet, so tweet, I, tweet. So I can do more sensory overload. Yeah, we we're need to have about. Bill Thanks do more sensory overload. Yeah. I'll get you some Red Bull, too, while you're there. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the double shot of it. The double shot. No, I was just going to get you the double shot espresso with some Red Bull on top. But no, he can tweet, <laughs> tweet, tweet, tweet all the way home. But he'll be on Twitter here soon. But go on and go and talk about response time. Because I think anybody that's been in traffic recently, or not even in traffic, it could be just like lazy. Sunday driving and you see the most asinine things happening because people have no ability, no reaction time. They have no response time. And it's kind of a law of diminishing returns. I mean, we continue to add, you know, all the the all the social media, we add all the phones, we add just music. I mean, some people can't walk and talk at the same time. I mean, I know most people aren't very good drivers at all, but they think they are. They think they can listen to the music, they can talk on the phone, they can text at the same time. I mean, they can't. And then a lot of those people nowadays in the United States are smoking pot while they're driving. Scary. And, and, and Scary. I mean, that's actually kind of funny, though, because I really like when you drive by somebody and they're doing 15 miles an hour on the highway and you're like, you are got to be smoking weed. There's no way. And you know they feel like they're doing 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. oh gosh, we're going so fast. Oh, we're going to get pulled over. Oh, it might God. be weed mixed with something else, too. I mean, who knows? That, that's some alcohol. I mean, you'd be thinking you're flying at 10 miles an hour. You could be in a go-kart at 5 miles an hour and be scared for your life. No, but, I mean, I think that that's something we need to really think about. And I also think it's funny how our country's legalizing it. I mean, they're legalizing it for a reason, people. It's not because they're going to help you get smarter. It's not because it's going to help you make more money. It's not because it's going to make you a happier, healthier individual. I mean, since when are they really thinking about you? They're not. I mean, I think it's more along the lines of, you know, the war. we're losing the war on drugs. And, and tax money. They want more money because yeah. of our deficit. And, well, we've had, I mean, when was the last So, time? I mean, instead of, uh, you know, because, I mean, pot is just so prevalent. 
then you know why not concentrate on the really really bad stuff? Because uh, you know, I mean, uh, think about it. it's the same thing with alcohol. You know, once upon a time, alcohol was banned, and look how that turned out. Which, by the way, for all you listeners, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up prohibition. Yeah, go check it uh, out in a book. <laughs> yeah, read a book. Read you know, a for, book. For, Pick for, up on, a book. On okay. Something like that. Go to your public library or, or the nearest bookstore for. Crime. That's that's another thing too. Real quick sidebar: bookstores are going out of business. I know. I know. I, I mean, know. The, the, I used to be a member of Walden Books. Back in the day, my, my two of my books used to be sold at Walden Books. Yeah, yeah. they're not anymore. And they're, yeah, not Barnes anymore. and Noble is falling apart. Yep. Uh, there was another bookstore too that I can't, Borders Books. Yeah, they're falling apart. Yeah. I mean, you, you see a few of them here. I mean, now it's like if you're not buying my book digitally or you're not getting it online on Amazon, Live Your True Life or the Ten Day Challenge to Live Your True Life, you're not getting it because you know what? The bookstores are all going out of business. Right. Because people aren't reading anymore. They're just taking things for face they're, they're, value. They're playing World of Warcraft or watching American Idol or Dancing with the Stars or Big Brother. Big Brother. They'll say that you know the people in the clips again. They have no idea who Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, you know, blah blah blah, all, all those people. But they know exactly who, you know, uh, the results from the last episode of Dancing well, we with the Stars. We need to go out on the streets. All the, we need to do that. Yeah, we need to that go. Out, we need cool, to have a actually. sequel. We need to have a sequel. So yes. we're going to go out on the streets and ask a bunch of bonehead questions. And you know what? I bet everybody's going to pass. I bet they're all going to get flying colors. We'll give stars out to everybody. Remember when you got gold stars when you were a kid? You know, or some of y'all got checks next to your name. <laughs> <laughs> the cold prickly is, is one of my teachers gave us. Really? Yeah. Instead of a warm fuzzy, she gave us a gold, cold prickly. What's a cold prickly? You know, uh, well, it's like uh, <laughs> not a warm fuzzy, but a little ball with like, you know, spikes on it. Oh, you mean the ones that you get like in the fields on your tennis shoes? Yes. Yes. That's the, just mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she she got her point across, though. Oh. Well, ours just gave checks. They, they wrote your name on the on the chalkboard, and they had checks next to your name as, when you screwed up each well, time. Well, you know, she, uh, this teacher probably just didn't want to stick around after school to, you know, for detention. <laughs> so, you exactly. know. Exactly. And some of the times you wonder, why are those people actually teaching school? I mean, like, you don't want anything to do with them. You know, Most of those teachers don't even like kids. Well, I mean, it's either that or they like them so much they go around screwing them. Oh, I mean, all, you, you never the, used the to boy hear stories dream about that. Of having sex with this teacher. I mean, you never used to hear. I mean, I'm sure it did happen. You just didn't hear about it. Yeah, but that was you like know? a boyhood dream. Yeah, I, mean, I remember dream. now. Now it's like rampant. Well, back in school when I was in middle school, actually, um, one of my one of our teachers got fired. And it happened, and it was, like, kids that I used to, like, like the cool kids, you know? Like, there were, like, three guys that were, like, the cool kids that apparently were over at this lady's house. And, yeah, she got fired because I guess she was showing um, pornography, and they were drinking and stuff. And they were, like, in seventh grade. Good grief. Yeah, I mean, so it does happen, but that's, like, a boyhood dream, like, have sex with the teacher. Which, by the way, my girlfriend is a teacher, so Jana love you, and, and uh, she is right. Uh, our, our teachers do not get nearly enough respect, and, and they don't get paid nearly um, what they're worth i agree with you and i think there's some wonderful teachers out there i think there's some teachers that need to really rethink their career choice i think that they're choosing something that they hate and you know why should you be surrounded by something you hate it's like being a realtor when you hate people i mean it's just not a good concept pick something you like for all or in my case an insurance agent oh yeah yeah bill the insurance that doesn't like to sell (laughs) but he doesn't like to sell and i grew to hate people too and he, he hates people, too, yes. by the way. He's certifiably crazy also. I'm just kidding, Bill. I'm just kidding. No, but I understand. It's like, why do something that you hate? And Bill jumped out of it, you know? I mean, but that takes reasoning. That takes thought process, you it know? It takes intelligence. It takes guts. It takes glory. So next but not least, another thing that you can do to keep yourself smarter is to limit your stimuli. Be cognizant of sensory overload. Be cognizant of of sensory overload when things are getting overloaded when you got too many things going on at one time guess what stop it because it's not going to work for you you're i mean you you know you don't have four arms you know you don't you don't have you don't i think a lot of times we overestimate much like how we overestimate like the size of our stomach when we go to a restaurant and you're hungry you order all this food and you go oh i can't believe i did that well it's the same thing on sensory overload no you can't do facebook and talk on the phone, and write a report for work, and have music going on. I hate to say it, but there's a 1% of the people listening tonight that can. Now, how good it is, that's to be determined. I mean, it's certainly not going to be your best. 
but you can try it. But for some of y'all, it's going to be just dribble. It's going to be just dribble. I mean, it's not going to have anything to it. There's not going to be no meaning. You're not even going to remember what the conversation was about on the phone. Right. I mean, you know, so let's, and, 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 you know, it's like stop already and start realizing where you are. Start being cognizant of the moment. Start being mindful. And I think that's key is that we're getting away from being mindful our whole life. We're getting away from being in the moment. So stop. As I talk about in my latest book, The 10 Day Challenge to Live Your True Life, The Way of the Dog. A dog sees everything as a new experience. It sees everything. They go to the park, the same park, day after day, but they experience it as new. Try to do that in your own life as an adult. Try to stop seeing everything as boring and humdrum. Stop with the over the over sensory overload. Put it down for a little while. Get in nature. Become one. Reunite yourself. And in the process, educate yourself. Because you have to move your you have to actually make your brain do something. It is a muscle. And that's why, you know, we have to do that. Otherwise, there is diseases of the mind that's caused by not using it. Absolutely. And so, Little atrophy. Yeah. I mean, besides Alzheimer's, besides other things, too, yes. that we haven't figured all out. So remember that. You can keep your smart self smart, okay? And we can't wait till next week. We're going to have a great show for you. We're going to have more interesting stuff to talk about. But I think this has been a great show. I think it's been a wonderful show. Thanks very much. I, I added to my knowledge tonight. Yay. And stay mindful, everybody. Stay yes. tuned. Perspectives with Ashley Burgess will be back in... We'll be back in three shakes.